What's going on everyone? So I'm back again on my living room floor and this time I've got a bit of a different video for you all and that is my home server. Now uh, this is just a basic file server. Uh, it's running Windows 8 Pro, or actually 8.1 Pro and it's having a bit of problems lately. I don't know what's going on with it. Um, it basically runs headless. It's not normally sitting here. It's behind everything over there and it's powered on 24-7 and it just dishes out files to my uh, network um, just using standard Windows networking and yes I want to go use it yesterday and for some weird reason it locked up and then refused to uh, boot properly well it was booting up but I couldn't I couldn't see any of the uh, any of the drives on the network and that could be a problem with my network. It went funny the other day, nothing would load or anything. Um, so it could be my router, it could be the server. Um, the server, I was messing around with it a couple of weeks ago trying to install um, a print server for iOS, which didn't really work. I don't know why, but um, it just didn't work. So I, that might be causing issues with it. So I'm probably going to restore it anyway. And before we do that, I'm going to give you a good look around the system. So it is a ITX workstation board, or I think it's actually just a desktop Intel board in a micro ATX case. Micro ATX, just because it's the smallest case I had on hand and ITX cases don't really have enough room. And I'll show you why in a second. So it's just some brand. I don't know what it is. I left the plastic on the front and yeah, it looks all right. It's actually quite nice looking. It's very small. Uh, it's got plenty of holes in it. These aren't holes, they're just like a rough surface. And it's an Intel Atom. I believe it's a dual core Intel Atom. So, you know, it's got a bit of grunt behind it. it. Has a couple gigs of RAM. I think it's two or four gigabytes of memory. So it's got more than enough just for file sharing, simple stuff. Stuff you could do with an old Pentium 4. But it's super low power compared to any other board I had. And I picked it off. I picked the board up on eBay heaps cheap. So let's take a look. So inside, um, it's got this little vent on the side. Doesn't really do much. Just brings in dust. There's no filters in this thing. Um, just because I'd rather have to clean the board than, you know, forget about the filters and have them clog up. I just feel that filters would. Um, I don't know. I just don't like filters. In this case, it doesn't support them. So yeah. Okay, so this is the inside of the case, and I'll just flip it up on its back a bit. Oh, it's actually turned on at the moment. Oops. I'll turn that off. Now, it's completely set up to run completely headless, which means no input, no monitor, uh, no keyboard, no mouse, nothing like that. It can boot up on its own. Um, I spent a couple of weeks. This was before Windows 10 had officially launched, and I just wanted to get the server up and going, so I ended up choosing Windows 8.1 Pro. I think that's working now. Yeah, I ended up choosing Windows 8.1 Pro. Yeah, there's pros and cons to that, but I I ended up spending weeks. Um, by the time I got this finished, Windows 10 had come out, but you know, I already had the Windows 8 installed on here, so I just left it. Now, um, yeah, I spent weeks setting this thing up. It's not a standard Windows 8 Pro install. It's been heavily modified. When I say heavily modified, I've modified a lot of tweaks and stuff with the registry, so it does certain things that are more geared towards what a file server should be doing. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the inside of the case. So, here's the inside of the system, and it's a bit dusty. Um, it was really, really neat when I first built it, but I've been through two hard drives since. And... First up, I had an old Toshiba 2.5-inch hard drive, and it was mounted vertically here. Uh, it, ended up in, it ended up dying just because it was running all the time doing stuff. Uh, Windows tends to trash disks for some weird reason, uh, boot disks anyway. Um, even when the system's just sitting there idle, I don't know. Or maybe it was just because the drive was old and it was sitting vertically. Anyway, so then I replaced it with a 3.5-inch 80-gig drive, another really old one that I had floating around. It was working fine, and then one day it just died. Um, it stopped reading properly. Um, I think it's mainly because the drives were old and they're sitting vertically. It may be the extra sort of gravity <laughs> pulling the disc down a bit, um, probably messed with the heads or something. So 
I've just mounted this one here. It's out of a 2010 iMac, I believe. Anyway, it's just like a Seagate or a Western Digital or something, 160 gigs. And it's just sort of mounted there in the uh, five and a quarter inch bay. So yeah, it's been running fine ever since. Um, in the system here, uh, here we have a power supply. It's made by Thermal Master. Apparently this brand, the OEM is Cooler Master. So I don't know if that says anything. It's an all right, it's fairly quiet. And this whole system is passively cooled bar this one fan here. And the side of the case has heaps of holes and stuff on it, and I left the back open and everything. It's fairly open. It doesn't seem to get very hot, so I don't think heat's going to be an issue. Um, this is an Intel board. It's a core, it's a, not a core 2, it's a dual core Intel Atom. Uh, I believe D5200 or something. So I will put that in the description, the specs on this board, and a link to it. Now, it's, um, it's ITX, as I said. It's fairly good. It's only got one legacy PCI slot, which I've got a SATA 2 controller sitting in, and that's running um, one of the three terabyte drives. It, I can't on this board. I can't boot off this controller. I really wanted to have the um, the two uh, storage drives running on SATA 3, which is the rest of this system, and the this drive here running on SATA 2. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's right. I think it's SATA 3 and SATA 2. I don't think it's SATA 1. Um, so yeah, that's all right. It seems to have all right performance. I've got, um, yeah, we've got one of the discs on SATA 2. There's no real difference. Um, with mechanical drives, um, even 7200 RPM ones, there's no real speed. It can't saturate a SATA 3 connection anyway. Um, it can just barely sa saturate a SATA 2 connection, if at all. Um, and the network's only 100 megabits, so you wouldn't notice any lag anyway. Um, that will be upgraded to... Uh, sorry, my mic screwed up again. Yeah, that'll be upgraded to uh, gigabit Ethernet soon when I replace my um, internet. I just haven't been bothered replacing the network until I have upgraded the fiber anyway. So yeah, um, the system's fairly dusty. Got a little brush here. Going to brush it all out. Um, luckily, the CPU isn't too bad. It's just mainly just a bit of, you know... It's sitting on a carpet floor and you know you get little bits of dust in there like nothing serious so yeah let's take a close look at the drives okay so sorry this is probably the best um, angle and view I can sort of get uh, as I said this is the boot drive up here and these two drives are my storage drives now I've got two three terabyte uh, Seagate Barracudas the 7200 RPM and I've labeled them because they have different names on the network. This one's called Terablox, and the one underneath it's called Megablox. And they hold different things. Um, Megablox, which is the one on the bottom here, that was my first three terabyte drive I got. I got it a couple of years ago, probably like a year or two ago. Um, and then I got this one recently after I moved here and built the server. And originally the server was going to be a free NAS box, but after searching online about it and reading up about FreeNAS, it really wasn't what I was looking for. I was mainly looking for a, um, a Windows file server because all my other machines are on Windows and OS 10 supports Windows, uh, I think it's called SMB or something. Or oh, I can't remember. It comes up in um, Xbox Media Center anyway. So yeah, it works perfectly with all my other systems and it's an operating system that I'm really familiar with. So may as well just stick with that and I had a copy of Windows 8 lying around anyway so um, yeah and the boot drive yeah come on going to the boot drive I don't know why um, there's the wiring it's fairly neat because this is only an ITX board it doesn't even use any uh, CPU extra 12 volt lines so it runs nice and cool um, I haven't actually put a, a power meter across this thing yet um, because I don't have one but I did some calculations just looking up online uh, how how much power each component draws and I think I worked it out to be under 50 watts I think I think it came out to just under 50 watts which is pretty good for something that's meant to be running 24 7 and I do power it off every now and again when I'm messing around with it and yeah it's just until recently I think it's because I installed 
I actually installed iTunes on this and the Bonjour program, which is for print sharing, because I was trying to get AirPrint to work on my network and it didn't, so yeah. Um, it's, it's set up to boot with Windows and I think it really bogged the system down because this is only an Atom. I'll put the specs in the description below. Oh yeah, it's a uh, D5200HN and this is just the board set up here. I just stuck it in the bottom because it's fancy. Um, and there's some warning stickers in there and stuff. This all came with the board. I'll give you a better look at that. Okay, so let's boot the system up. Now I've got it powered off here and the way I've got the BIOS set up in this thing is it's going to Whenever it loses power, it automatically boots back up because it's sitting behind my TV and everything. It's a real pain to press the power button on the front. So if I shut it down to, um, you know, rearrange the power cables and stuff over there, all I have to do to boot it back up is just plug it back in and it'll boot. So let's just flip this on. And this is running through an HDMI converter. Should boot up. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear it. You can hear it booting up now. Um, this top drive is making a bit of a crunchy noise. Um, I don't know why. I think it's just an old drive, it's just noisy. Um, let me just switch my receiver back to the right channel. Because for some reason it started switching back to the TV. DVD. And then number one, there we go. So we missed the boot intro, it's just a little Intel splash screen, it's nothing special. Let's just dim that down. All right, so here's the system here. It actually booted up fine. Um, I don't know why it wasn't booting before, but since I pulled it out of its little hidey hole, it's booted up fine. And those lines, sorry about that, it's just a weird refresh rate because this thing you normally boots headless and it's not set up for this uh, resolution. So yeah, there's all the specs about the system, nothing special. It's running Windows 8.1 Pro, and as you can see, they've got the Bonjour. Got Bonjour installed, it's a complete waste. I don't know if I'll restore this, because I do have, um, I use our Cronus True Image, which is basically like a hard drive backup suite thing and it has a bootable uh, Linux distro and you can recover your drives. It's what I use for all my systems because it's way easy because actually um, if we go into Terablocks, this is all my movies and stuff but because it's a bigger drive, like it's got more free space on it at the moment, I just keep all the backups in there and you know it's got my old Windows 8.1 image off my old uh, main PC and then got backups of the server and you can see full config server if you can actually read that, yeah, um, because this is pretty heavily modified because, as I said, it runs headless, so, um, <clears throat> so, the only way to really manage files and stuff on this thing is to remote desktop into it, and when you remote desktop into Windows 8.1 for some reason, and you exit out of remote desktop, it stays locked, so, you know, I'll just do that, oh, didn't even lock, <laughs> weird. Um, but yeah, it'll the system will stay locked, and so it'll stay like this, and that is quite annoying. So I had to set it up. Um, I can't remember what, exactly what I did to it, but it's basically set up. Sorry, it's basically set up. So um, yeah, so it's basically set up with a bunch of little tweaks like that. Um, you know, it's got this um, background info thing on there, just so when I log in, I can sort of have a quick glance at it, what's what's going on with it, and the IP address, because I do use both DHCP and um, static addressing on my local network. I use DHCP for wireless stuff and um, some other networking stuff that's on my, I have two routers now, I have uh, the main one, which is actually the modem as well, and then I've got a second one down here, which dishes out. Um, it's a, it's a gigabit router, uh, but it's not. It's it's piggybacked off the main router because I ran out of Ethernet, 
So it's piggybacked off the main router and it dishes out uh, 100 megabit and the DHCP server is, it's a, um, I can't remember the word, but basically the router down here, the secondary one which is piggybacked off the first one, it does not do any sort of DHCP. It's all the DHCP stuff is forwarded to the main router, so I don't have IP conflicts. It's kind of complicated how I set it up, but you know, if you're into network stuff, you probably understand what I mean. So yeah, uh, it also dishes out um, wireless G for some of my older consoles that are only wireless G, like the um, uh, DS and stuff, and the PSP. PSP is only wireless G, and it's got a different type of encryption and stuff on it. Oh, it might still be WPA. I don't know. Can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's I've set the um, the signal strength on that router is really low. It only covers like one room in my house, and it's just for this room, just to do small stuff like that. And you know, it's hardly ever turned on anyway. Um, yeah. So battery's going flat. So 8.1. What I'll probably end up doing is just dusting this thing out and uninstalling iTunes and see if it dies again. If it dies again, I do have a boot here, a boot drive, and I'll just unplug. I'll just unplug Megablocks, which doesn't have any images on it. It's all just other crap. It's where all my files go to die. And yeah, it's been a pretty uneventful vlog, but I don't know, I just thought I'd show off my server. I've been meaning to do it for a while. It's just been behind there and a pain in the ass to get out. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uninstall this stuff and hopefully it doesn't die again. I might actually try and plug this into the network sitting here and see if I can access it. Okay, so sorry if the audio sounds a bit crappy. I had to switch microphones. I'm just using the onboard one at the moment. So here's the specs on the system here. It's a 1.86 gigahertz uh, dual core Intel Atom. It is a 2D 2500, I was thinking D5200, but it's actually a type of camera. And default gateway is all zeros. I don't know why. Oh, actually, um, this doesn't update automatically. It only updates on boot. I've connected the Ethernet, Ethernet, and it is working. I don't know what was going on there. But, yeah, as you can see here, it's free space, 137 gigs on C. Uh, D is... I don't know what D is, actually. Um, I think it's just the another Windows partition. I don't know why it's coming up there. It's probably the um, Windows install partition that carries other stuff, which is kind of useless. Uh, e has 1.6 terabytes. F only has 855 gig, and that is the Megablocks drive, which has more stuff on it. So if I go over here and just excuse the mess, and my desk is filthy. So if we go here. Let's just point the camera at the screen. Man, this camera does not like something going on here. So if I hit OK, and I've just logged into the server via remote desktop, and this is one of the things I had to tweak with Windows because now that I'm logged in, it's locked me out of it's locked me out of this machine because you can't have with Windows with consumer versions of Windows, you can't have more than one user active at the same time. If I was running Windows Server, I could, but Windows Server is a... Ah, it was just overkill for this system. I didn't really need it. So, yeah, so it locks, uh, locks me out. But if I go over here... Sorry, again for the mess. And it's probably out of focus, but yeah, I can see everything on here. And I'll probably end up uh, uninstalling iTunes using this computer just because it's easy to use. I've made this little thing here, it's just a, a bat file, and basically you have no control over log off and stuff while you're in remote desktop, nothing comes up, you can only exit remote desktop, and there you go, it counts down, it does like a little a log off command, there's another one there for shutdown and restart as well because um, I can't shut down and restart using remote desktop and I need to do that sometimes. And as I said, it's behind the TV, so I can't really get to it to manage it that way. And it's just way easier to log in from my computer, especially if I need to install something. So, yeah, that's about it, really. Yeah, it's a bit uneventful. I'm going to uninstall iTunes because it really was useless. Um, I might still leave the printer shared on it, actually. It's been easier to sh uh, print 
because I actually ended up using it with the media center, even though I won't need to be printing off it, but you know, it popped up on the network, so it's like, hey, this computer's showing a printer, do you want to borrow the drivers? And it's like, yeah, sure, why not? So yeah, pretty peculiar. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and hopefully, when I come back in a minute, I'll have the server put back all in place. Okay, so yet again, I spoke too soon. Um, I put the system back in, and it's not booting. The bootloader is corrupted, again. Um, I did force shut down the computer, or the server, the other day, because I remote desktoped into it, and it locked up, and I was like, ah, I'll just unplug it, and it'll be fine. And it looks like it's corrupted. Just the bootloader on that main drive. And I have to be really careful now because I've got all three drives connected and I don't want to erase any of them except for the boot drive. So if we just go here, we go... Uh, let's go to re Tools and Recovery. Darken that down a bit. Come on. Oh, it's frozen. It's really slow. Okie dokie. So my mouse keeps on dying, which isn't good. But uh, yeah, it looks like we can try and recover this drive, but it's <sighs> kind of slow because it has to load up, has to spin up two three terabyte disks, and pretty much anything over two terabytes is always a pain to um, get going in sort of this lower software sort of a thing, low level software, just because it's, I don't know, just the way it works, I guess. And it's got a legacy BIOS, so it's a bit hard to sort of set things up. Okie dokie, so fresh battery in there, and I've loaded up the most recent backup of this server, which was done on the 12th of the 6th, 2015, which was a couple months ago. Um, so it's the most recent one. It's not before I installed iTunes. Okay, recover whole disks. Now this is the hairy scary part. Okay, yeah, that's the right disk, but why isn't it showing the other ones? Hold on a second. Let's just close this. Cause I really don't want to overwrite my other disc. Oh, is it actually seeing all three discs? Oh! No, it's not going to see all the discs because Megablocks, which is the drive I'm worried about overwriting, uh, it's running off the... It's running off that PCI card. Why won't it sync click? Yeah, it's running off the PCI... Why the... What the hell's going on here? Fucking all right, then recovery. Um, twelve to six. Yeah, that's the one. All right, yeah. All right, all right. I got it. Recover. Oh, what's going on here? This thing's going crazy. But yeah, the uh, Mega Blocks disc, which is the other drive that I was worried about overriding, it's running off that PCI card, so this thing can't see it anyway. That's why it's not showing up. Come on. Oh, I'll get a new keyboard and mouse for this thing. Oh, this is actually the one off the media, so it's really crappy. It's like, I don't know. It's going crazy. All right, cover whole disks. Yep. Disk two. Um, so that says Windows Server. If I hold it up, right? Yeah. That says Windows Server. Uh, it's the MBR track, which is your sort of start of the partitions. And system reserves, which is that other funny drive I was showing you before that had like 98 megabytes free or something. That just contains the Windows recovery stuff. Alright, so next. Now it's saying. Alright, specify recovery settings for partition 2. Alright, yes, let me have a look at it. This is actually really good software. It's just, I don't know, a few little things in it, but. Keep in mind that this backup I've done has been spread over three disks, so the partition sizes flop around a bit. Yes, originally this disk was 60 gigabytes because it was an old PS3 drive. Um, that was the first 2.5 inch drive that died. That's why the partition size down there says 55 gigs and then expanding it to 152. Um, okay, let's just go through this. Okay, number of operations. Okay, so recover MBR of the disk, hard disk number two, because we booted off the flash drive, which would mean the flash drive would be disk one, but technically it's only disk zero. I don't know how this is working anyway. 
Um, deleting partition of hard disk 2, drive letter C, NTFS, 350 megabytes, that is the system reserve, that, in that includes the Windows bootloader. Uh, recovery of partition sector by sector, so it's a one to one copy, that is drive C, system reserve, 350 megabytes, so it's recovering that bootloader. I could just recover the bootloader and leave it at that, but I'm not going to do that, just in case, just, to, just so I'm clean again on the OS, there's not stuff floating around. Delete partition, NTFS, Windows underscore server, which is the Windows partition, 152 gigabytes, a recover partition, this to uh, C, it'll change it to D, but it'll change it back to C in Windows, I think, it should remap itself. And then volume label, Windows underscore server, size 55.55 gigs to 152.3. And then we go to check options. What's under options? Validate backup, reboot the computer automatically if necessary, if needed for the recovery. Ooh, I'm just going to leave those. I don't care about that. Proceed. Ooh. Now, we just don't touch anything on the computer. Okay, now don't shut down because I want to know if it did it all right. Okay, recovering MBR, let's just zoom in there. Recovering MBR from E Windows Server. Do, 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 do. And hopefully, please don't be frozen. All right, cool. Hmm. Cool, there we go. Okay, it's recovering partition sector by sector. That would be the Windows one, the bootloader. All right, so I'm going to let this run through, and hopefully in a few minutes, it'll be done. Okie dokie, so it looks like it's finished. Now, all we need to do is uh, put everything back together, and it should hopefully be working. All right, so uh, first up, let's go here. Close that. All right, system is going down now. There's the listen that should turns off. All right, unplug that because I set the flash drive as the first boot device. Let's see if it's going to work. This BIOS is kind of slow to turn on. Oh, please work. Uh, preparing automatic repair. Cool. So it's just uh, cleaning a few things up, I think, hopefully. Okay. We'll need to use recovery tools on your installation media if you don't have any installation media. Okay, so it just seems like a restart just fixed that weird little glitch there. I don't know what's causing that. Maybe because I had the flash drive plugged in or something when it booted and I unplugged it. But uh, yeah, it looks like it's working fine now. So if we go down here into this PC just double check everything is working Whew. this computer is a bit slow but you know it's only a file server it doesn't really matter wow, that is really slow, why is that so slow? Windows is still booting cool, so we've got Megablocks and Terablocks let's just open them up Okie dokie. Whew, scared me for a minute, said that it was empty. Alright, cool, that's all there. And... Uh, do, 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 do. It says they're full anyway. Videos. These are all just my movies and stuff. And some old Minecraft videos. I have to delete them. Cool, so I'm just gonna... I don't know. I'm gonna shut this down. This will probably just be the end of the video because it seems like it's working fine. I'm going to shut this down, unplug the keyboard and everything and um, the mouse and uh, this USB extension cable and plug the Ethernet back in, boot it up headless and see if it boots. I don't think it won't. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.